Good morning. Today is Saturday, December the 31st. Hey Amen. It's such a blessing to be in the land of the living on the last day of the year. And to say thank God that I've made it this far. Our lesson this morning is what the Lord requires. And our lesson is coming from Micah 6, the 6th verse through the 8th. And the scripture lesson text read, Wherewith shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before the high God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves of a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams or with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has assured thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with God. Amen. This is a great and powerful lesson we have speaking to us what God requires. He doesn't require our car or our home. He doesn't require uh, us dedicating the first child to him. He requires each one of us to have no other God before him. To do justly, to do right by everyone that we meet. By everyone we come in contact with. To love mercy. Not only when it comes to us. But to love mercy when it comes to others as well. Do we look on uh, someone else blessed? And how do we see it? Are we able to praise the Lord for their blessing, for my heart, really meaning it? Or do we hold strife and envy within ourselves? And to walk humbly with thou God. Not bragging about what you have accomplished, or what you have did, or what we have uh, uh, made it through. But that we can truly and honestly say, if it had not been for the Lord God on my side, where would I be? I mean, this is a, a powerful and strong thought there. The Lord is truly so wonderful to each of us. I'm going to read you a passage from the Matthew Henry Concise Commentary. It says, These verses seem to contain the substance of Balaam's consolation with Balaam, how to obtain the favor of Israel's God. Deep conviction of guilt and wrath will put men upon careful inquiries after peace and pardon. And then there begins to be some ground for hope in them. In order to God's being pleased with us, our care must be for an interest in the atonement of Christ, and that the sin by which we displeased him may be taken away. What will be a, a satisfaction to God's justice? In whose name must we come, as we have nothing to plead as our own? In what righteousness shall we appear before him? The proposal betray ignorance. Though they show zeal, they offer that which is very rich and costly. Those who are fully convinced of sin and of their misery and danger by reason of it would give all the world if they had it for peace and pardon. Yet they do not offer a right. The sacrifices had value from their reference to Christ. It was impossible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin 
as it is impossible that the offering of homes, uh, personal belongings, cars can take away our sins. None of those things have ever and will never belong to us. We will always pay some type of taxes on it, which means we'll never own it. It will always have a price on its head. So it doesn't belong to us. What belongs to us is what we can give from the heart. And all proposals of peace, except those according to the gospel, are abused. They could not answer the demands of divine justice, nor satisfy the wrong done to the honor of God by sin, nor would they serve at all in the place of holiness of the heart and reformation of the life. Men will part with anything rather than their sins. That is a powerful statement there. Let us not hold on to our sins, our lying, our backbiting so tightly, saying, I can't change, I can't do no better. Let us not hold on to those things. But they part with nothing so as to be accepted of God unless they do part with their sins. Moral duties are commanded because they are good for man. In keeping God's commandments, there is a great reward as well as after keeping them. God has not only made it known but made it plain. The good which God requires of us is not the paying a price for the pardon of sin and acceptance with God, but love to himself and to what is there unreasonable or hard in this. Every thought within us must be brought down to be brought into obedience to God if we would walk comfortably with the Lord, that he is ever ready to give his grace to the humble, waiting, patient. This is a wonderful and powerful lesson. I pray that you meditate on it. Take your time and listen to it just a little bit at a time. And ask God to open your heart, your ears, your mind, your thoughts as you receive what the Lord has for you in each word. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed day.